Hi, today I wanted to show you an update on our updated Q Horror range, which is uh, our router series that we did. Um, the previous unit, the Q Horror 301W, um, that was a Wi Fi 6 enabled SD WAN router, um, had some 10 gig ports and some uh, standard 1 gig ports as well. Um, these are the updated versions. Um, so the part number uh, does not feature the W on the end, which stood for wireless. So we've took the Wi Fi out. So these are just dedicated SD WAN routers. Uh, they're not Wi-Fi routers. Um, we've got two versions. We've got the 321 and the 322. I'll show you the differences here. I'll just do a couple of slides and then I'll take you through the setup of one of them on my internet connection here. Um, so here we go to what they look like. Um, so this is the 321, the smaller of the two. Um, this has six uh, 2.5 gig uh, RJ45 ports. Um, port one is default um, as the LAN, uh, the WAN port. Sorry, the rest are set up as LAN. Um, but you can change this around. Um, I'll show you a little graphic later on. Uh, you can really have the WAN and LAN anywhere you want. So you could have dual WAN setups with two active connections if you wanted to. Um, so moving on to the 322, the larger of the two, which is the one I have here. So this has six 2.5 gig RJ45 ports and three 10 gig um, RJ45, the 10 base T standard as well. So you can see those numbered on the back. Now by default on uh, both units, uh, port number one um, of the 2.5 gig ports is going to be the WAN port. Uh, once you've gone through the initial setup, if you want to have it different, you can go through and change it, which I'll demonstrate as well. Um, here's a little comparison between the uh, previous generation, the Q Horror 301W, and the two new units. Um, so we can see that we've got uh, better performance for the VPN. Um, so if you are doing multiple VPNs, not only can you have um, more simultaneous connections, um, but the speed of those connections is now higher if your internet speed um, does allow it. Um, so anybody that wants to see more there, you can pause that and have a look at that if you'd like to. Um, if we come out of this and we go to the uh, the web page, this sort of is a nice graphic that shows you just really how you can configure the WAN port. So even though port 1 has a label on it saying WAN, if you want port 1 to even just be a LAN port, not even be the WAN port, you can change it within the settings. Um, so I'll go on to show you that in a moment, but it's very, very flexible. Um, as with most of our products, um, they can be found in the QNAP QFinder software. So here we can see the uh, the Q Horror has been found. It's got the IP address of the unit. Um, so I've typed that over here. So just a quick refresh. So this is the, the, the smart installation guide. So you can pick which language you want it in. Um, so I'm going to say English here. Click Next. It's going to say we're going to set up and access the QAN. Click OK. Now it wants the uh, the default password to be typed. So this is effectively the MAC address. So this is the MAC address over here, the default password. So you've got to type this. Um, it is case sensitive. Uh, you don't need the hyphen. So you can type that without it. So I'll just move that to a second screen so I can see it at the same time. Uh, so if I do, uh, in this case, it's 245EBE. So we'll just look at this as I'm typing it. Um, 70050F. Uh, so if we have a look there, we can see that that's what's matched uh, on the uh, the QFinder uh, screen there as well. Um, so now we're going to type in a, uh, a new password. Uh, so I'm just going to type in um, just a password I use. Okay, so we're going to confirm that. I'm not going to save it. Um, ask you for the domain selections. It's basically everywhere or China. So I'm just going to say uh, global for mine. So we'll click apply. Um, it wants to know your WAN settings, so you can click settings here and you can go in and change it to things like PPPoE if you've got a static IP, things like that, you can do it. Um, for my internet connection, DHCP is fine, I get all the settings automatically from an Ethernet port uh, from the fiber connection, so that's fine. I can just click apply. Um, now it's going to go off, um, just obtain the IP address, get every bit of information it needs. Um, if your ISP does support IPv6, you could enter that information there as well. Um, but this is going to do the first connection um, uh, to the internet, if possible. Uh, once it's connected to the internet, um, it will do things like firmware checks, make sure it's on the latest firmware, a few things like that. In some instances, uh, this process might not get you online, especially if you're wanting to use one of the other uh, LAN ports for a WAN connection, because currently the only one assigned as WAN is port 1 of the 2.5 gigs. Um, so I'm just going to click Finish there. Now it wants me to log in. The default username is admin password is whatever you typed on that initial setup wizard. 
Um, so now we're in, and in my case, um, I've got a public internet IP address. I'm online. It's everything has been done for me. It can see that the connected devices is just me. Um, so a nice little status uh, information there. Now, if you did want to come in here and change some ports around, you can go to network and go to the physical interface settings. Now, by default, it's looking at the WAN port, but if you wanted, let's say, 10 gig port one to be um, the WAN port instead, you would come across to the LAN section. We've got the 10G1 down there. We can click the settings on it, and instead of it being a LAN, you can just change it across to WAN. Um, now, doing this doesn't necessarily stop port 1 of the 2.5 gigs being a WAN, so you can have dual WAN on this if you want, so you can have a couple uh, connected at the same time. Uh, now, one thing I did want to show you is, by default, all the uh, Ethernet ports on the back of the NAS, um, they are isolated away from each other. Um, so you can see that they're all on effectively different um, IP ranges. So they're all on a Class C subnet. Um, so port 2 is the 100.1, 101.1 for port 3, and so on. So as you're going through, every one of them is on a range. So if you, if you were to put um, a device into one of the 10G ports, it wouldn't necessarily be able straight away to talk to anything in one of the other ports. So everything's isolated, which is great for IoT devices. Maybe you don't want certain devices talking to other devices, but you want everything to have internet access. Uh, you can set that up as well. Uh, so over here on the WAN, you get a bit of information about your connection. You get to enable and disable it, um, different settings. So if you wanted to, to change it, you can. Um, so this is giving you a real-time update just like on the dashboard here of the traffic that's happening uh, on the connection um, so if you wanted to I can just run a quick speed test uh, here in a different web browser on another screen so we should start seeing the traffic uh, information changing around here um, so with the speed test running uh, we should be able to see there we go 475 whatever that's, that's going on there and uh, once it's finished the download test we'll see it switch across to doing an upload test as everybody probably knows with speedtest.net um, so it's going to show you live status of what's actually happening with your internet connection at, at, at any time that you're using it. Um, so it's very good for, for, for monitoring, seeing, seeing what's happening. In my case, I obviously know everything that's being done is done from my Mac because it's the only one that's actually connected. Um, so that's some nice status information. Uh, you've got all the, uh, the Q1 settings in here as well. So if you wanted to go through with Q1, you can set that up. So if you wanted to create an SD1, uh, within your organization, you have multiple um, uh, Q horrors around the place, um, even some NAS uh, with our software running on it. Um, you can have everybody, even if they're not in the same building, effectively be on the same network. Um, and with these new ones, you can have a lot more VPN connections to allow that. Uh, so you can choose one to be a, a server for a set network. You can see information about the clients. Uh, so this will be important if you want to know what DHCP address somebody was given, perhaps something like that. You can come in here and have a look there. Um, within your firewall section, you've got lots of options for your firewall rules, NATs, if you want to do port forwarding, things like that, you can add rules and ranges, so it's dead easy to do that if you wanted to. Uh, you've got dynamic DNS, um, so you can log in with the QNAP ID so that you can enable the DIN DNS um, from the MyQNAP Cloud um, um, uh, dynamic DNS service that we, we offer. Um, we've also got uh, general VPN servers, so if you wanted to do um, different VPN options, um, you can do them here. So we've got few, a few options, different services that you can run from QBelt, L2TP, OpenVPN, and as well we've got WireGuard down there at the bottom. Um, so if you wanted this to be a, a VPN server, you can set that up. Um, equally, you could have um, one of your um, QHorror devices as the VPN server, and you could have everybody else connecting um, as a client. So you can set up a different connection profile. So you can go here, add up, want to add a profile, if it's OpenVPN, things like that. Um, so you can add different options in there. So you've got different things if you wanted to add multiples. It's very easy to do. Now you've got a web content filtering, so if you wanted to add a different role, so somebody's managing the, the, the content, so you can have some different uh, restrictions, especially for children. If you wanted to put different restrictions on different websites, you can do that. Uh, firmware updates can be done live, or you can update them manually. Um, and in the system information, you've got some basic system settings, so you can change the device name itself if you don't want the default. Uh, you can do restarts of, of the device um, remotely. You don't have to be next to the device and do the switch or anything like that if you want to you can do it from here um, back up the device um, all the settings that you've got so you've got them safe um, well that's handy if you're deploying a lot of them you can have them all on the same settings if you wish um, and there's also uh, different USB settings so you can put different uh, USB um, uh, drives into the USB port that's on the back um, and then you can share that out to the network if you want so, or you can use it as an FTP server as well um, so that's quite handy 
Um, if you do have any uh, QNAPs on on your network as well, so different NAS, you can come down here to the connected QNAP devices um, and it will find it. So this is very much exactly the same as you would find with our QFinder software. So if you had QFinder and you had multiple things here, like a different NAS or something that would appear here, um, this would also give you access to finding the QNAP. So this could be handy, especially if you're remote and you're accessing this interface remotely. Uh, QFinder Pro will not work remotely. Um, you must be in the same network, uh, but this connected QNAP devices will let you see into the QNAP and see the different information that's there. Um, so we'll just nip back to the dashboard. Um, so that's uh, an overview of the Q Horrors. Uh, so we've got the Q Horror 321, uh, the six port, and we've got the Q Horror 322, which has got the added three 10 gig ports on the end as well. Um, so if anybody has any questions, please do feel free to ask them in the, uh, the comments section down below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you.